So let's start opening form. So this opening form is going to actually be somewhat comprehensive. Uh, talking about the Sicilian, but I'm going to start out with some Accelerated Dragon basic things. So the Accelerated Dragon is a way to play a dragon formation in the Sicilian, but you get to play it fast. So normally the dragon would be like c5, knight f3, then you play d6 on move 2, then d4, take, knight takes, knight f6, knight c3, and g6. Okay, so this is called a dragon. And the reason it's called a dragon is because someone looked up into the sky and noticed that this pawn formation resembles the dragon constellation. I don't know if you guys knew that or not, but that's where the name comes from. Um, so the problem with this setup, at least theoretically speaking, is that white can obtain a Yugoslav formation, which is basically moves like f3, bishop c4, bishop e3, queen d2, queenside castle, and then basically playing h4, h5, and, and trying to mate black. And it's very theoretical, and you know, even one false move can mean instant doom. There have been several games where grandmasters have just gotten obliterated because they either tried to come up with a new move or they forgot the theory or whatever. And so this line in general has been giving uh, black a lot of headaches over the years. So people thought, well, let's accelerate it. So the idea of accelerated dragon is that in general, you don't push this pawn up to d6. And by saving a tempo on this move, your idea is that you eventually either want to play d5 uh, to free your pieces or do something else with that extra tempo that you save. So the way the Accelerated Dragon move order works is rather than playing d6 on move 2, and let me delete that, is that we play knight c6. And then d4 constitutes the open Sicilian, and like I said, we'll go over other stuff later, but I'm going to concentrate on Accelerated Dragon stuff first. And then knight cd4, knight d4, and now g6. Okay, so now notice the difference is that we've developed this knight on c6 before, this knight on f6, and that we've also played this move. We haven't played this move d6. Okay, so I'm going to start off with kind of the more classical responses that white has, which is to play knight c3. <laughs> That might be the problem. Okay, so yeah, you want to play knight c6 to control d4, is the point. Okay, so white plays knight c3 here. Okay, so it's a common move developing. Uh, so here, you want to play bishop g7 to force white to do something about this knight. Okay, so white has a couple of choices here. Um, so I'm going to look at the more classical line, which is to play bishop e3. So again, developing while also defending the knight. Okay, so black plays knight f6 here. Okay, now we come to a huge divergence. So white actually has a ton of moves here. Um, but only a couple are actually really testing. So I'm going to start out by looking at kind of what happens if white just develops sensibly. So yeah, I'm going to get to all that such, don't worry. Uh, I'm going to kind of tackle the knight take c6 lines together in in one thing. I don't know if I'm going to do it this time. Probably next time. I'll see what I can get through today, but then I'll probably go through those lines in one session. Because there's actually two, two times knight take c6 can happen. It can happen on move 7 here. It can actually happen uh, here on move 5. So on move 7 it makes slightly more sense than on move 5, but uh, I'll go through that later. But anyway, so knight c3, bishop g7, bishop e3, knight f6, okay. So I want to look at bishop e2 first, which is kind of, you know, a sensible move developing. So after bishop e2, black castles. And now white has a few choices, but the most sensible is probably just a castle. Uh, this is the accelerated dragon of the Sicilian defense. So it's Sicilian defense, and then the variation is the accelerated dragon. So Sicilian is characterized by 1c5, 
and then the accelerated dragon is characterized by this knight c6, c takes d4, and then g6. So the first move by black is the, is the Sicilian, and then after move 4 by black, it's called the accelerated dragon. Okay, so bishop b2, castle, so we're going to assume white castles. Okay, so the point is, the main reason why this opening, uh, the main merit of this opening as compared with the dragon is because after castle, we have this move that we can play in one move, which is this move d5. And the idea is, in the Sicilian, if you can ever play the move d5, you often have guaranteed yourself equality. Because, you know, by playing c5, you kind of are putting pressure on the dark squares. And so by playing d5, you're establishing control of the light squares as well. So, d5. Okay, so now um, there's a couple of choices. So I'll first look at what happens if they take on d5. So ed5, knight d5, knight d5, queen d5. Okay, so now there's really only one way for white to kind of try to get an advantage here, and that's to play this move bishop f3. So the idea of bishop f3 is that it forces our queen to move to an awkward square, and it also attacks the c6 knight. So, and I'll get to that much later, JP. I'll get to that much later. But, uh, okay. So, yeah, bishop f3 makes sense to hit c6 twice. And what we actually do as black here is we sacrifice a pawn. So after bishop f3, we want to play this move queen to a5. So queen c4 is actually also playable, but I think queen a5 is actually the better move. So the point is now that no matter what white does, black actually gets a very strong position. So it seems most natural to take on c6 with the knight. So if you take with the bishop, for example, then after take, knight takes, queen c7, knight d4, bishop a6 to hit this rook, and rook a d8. Uh, I mean, your bishops are kind of, you notice these bishops are kind of raking the board. And so, say after queen g4, bishop c8, queen e4, bishop b7, <laughs> and now h5. Now this queen is starting to look unhealthy. So after knight b5, queen c6, threatening this guy. So the queen has to stay on that file. And now all of a sudden, this queen is overloaded, defending this guy, and it's defending this guy. So black wins. So that's just a sample way to show how black gets tremendous pressure after white takes on c6 with the bishop. Okay. And if white plays a move that doesn't try to win a pawn, so say white plays c3, for example, now simply take on d4, take on d4, rook d8 to pin the bishop, queen e2, and take, take, and e6. And now notice that uh, black has n no structural weaknesses in his pawn chain, whereas white has this isolated pawn on d4. So after rook d1, queen b6 to defend this guy so he can get his bishop out. d5. Uh, this should be probably equal, if not slightly better for black. So you're just going to take and play bishop f5 and should be fine. Because our queen is slightly better than white's queen. And the rooks are about the same. And the bishops as well. Okay, so then also say if knight b3, so again, just queen c7, it's a nice safe square, and now we're threatening bishop takes b2, so c3, bishop f5, so we always have this rook d8 move in reserve, so now we play rook d8, so now we're threatening bishop d3, so after rook f1, knight e5, now we're suddenly infiltrating into d3, so knight d4 to block the d file. And now just bishop d7 to preserve the bishops. And now we check, gain the two bishops, and play e5. So this pawn's pinned, so we don't actually win material, but after queen c4, I mean, uh, black has two bishops, more control of the center. His queen is actively posted. Uh, and notice that this knight moves, that we have bishop g4, which wins material. So... 
white's in a bit of a pickle. So really the test and continuation in this position would be to take on c6 with a knight. So knight takes c6, take, okay. And now again, white has a few choices. So I'll save this bishop takes pawn for last, but assume white plays a move like c3. So now rook d8 to gain a tempo, bishop f5 to gain a tempo, rook b8. So now we're threatening to take on e4 and then take on b2. So he takes on f5. And now notice how we kind of fixed our pawn structure because we were threatening to double on the d-file. So now our pawns look a little weird, but we have good pressure on the b-pawn, and it's hard for him to push this b-pawn because then the c-pawn falls. And we actually have a lot of center pawns. And notice if he takes on f5, for example. Um, we can play a move like e6. And b5, because again, we have pressure on b2, and. I think we can actually win that pawn by force, so this is fine for black. We can't take on b2 right away because of queen c8 check, but this position is fine. And then if uh, like queen move, say queen d2. So now we simply take, and we don't actually fear the end game here, because even though our pawns are separated, these pawns are a problem because of this bishop. So we play rook b8, bishop c3, and now notice that we can actually do the same thing to white's pawn, and play c5. So now we actually have a pawn majority on the king side, and these three pawns are crippled even more than, than these two are. So there's an end game advantage for black here because of the pawn majority on the king side, which can create a pass pawn, whereas these pawns can never create a pass pawn. And similarly for queen c1, rook b8 again, getting out of the line of fire of this bishop and also threatening b2, so c3 forced. And now either c5 or queen c7. I, I like c5 personally. And then uh, white has a variety of moves, but basically the idea is you just want to get your bishop to f5, a rook to d8. And this pressure on this b pawn is going to be permanent because notice this rook is kind of stuck. As you see, a couple of moves that are white's choices are bishop d5 to protect this pawn and a3 to protect this pawn. So, uh, in any case, like you're going to play moves like bishop f5 to stop rook b1 and then kind of pop on this b pawn. And actually, the fact that our pawns are separated helps us in a way, because we have pressure on the b-file. Um, would this be easier than cb to make a file? I'm not exactly sure what type of file you mean. Like, I think it's easier in this to make a file to like give to somebody. But it depends what you want to use it for. Like, I don't think you can use this file to like make a training thing, so. But anyway, let's go back to bishop takes. Okay, so if he takes the pawn, so now we're down a pawn, but again, notice that we're gonna get tremendous compensation on his pawn. So we play rook b8, we gotta defend our rook, and now we're attacking this pawn twice. So white has a couple of choices here. So he can play a move like b4, we can just simply take take on a1, play queen c5, and this should be good for black. We're going to play bishop f5 and rook, f, rook c8 next, and we should probably be able to win a pawn. Our pieces will be better than white's pieces. This rook will be probably very passive. So black has all the play here. Um, if I move like bishop f4, attacking the rook. So now we actually play this move bishop a6. To kind of gain a tempo. So if bishop takes b8, we take on f1. And 
and that's good for us because B2 will fall eventually. Okay, so rook E1 instead. So now we take on B2, threaten this rook. Rook E7, rook D to gain a tempo, queen B1, and now bishop F6, hitting this rook. So now bishop C7, so we're hitting his queen, he's hitting our queen. It's very tricky now. Because if we take the queen with check, he takes, and then we lose our rook. But we have queen c3, and now black is completely winning. Because we're skewering his bishops, we're still threatening his queen. We're threatening this rook, and we're threatening this rook. So at the end of all this, uh, black's going to come out on top. So for example, if he takes on b8, we can take on c6, and then th we're threatening e7 and a1 both. Not to mention b8, depending on what happens. So, that's kind of crazy variation, but basically the fact that we have this queenside play means we're going to be able to get uh, good pressure, and, and white's pieces are not going to be nearly as good as ours. So, so that's kind of the main, this is kind of like the main position in the Accelerated Dragon. if white kind of just plays casually. So, any questions about that move order with bishop e2? If not, I'll move on to a couple of other choices that white has, which are Okay, so I'm going to move on to what happens if white tries to play a Yugoslav attack. Okay, so like I said before, the Yugoslav attack is characterized by f3, bishop c4, and queen d2. So uh, I'm going to tackle bishop c4 later, but let's see what happens after bishop e2. I mean, knight e5 doesn't do anything. Because don't forget, this pawn is still on d7. So knight e5 doesn't do anything. You're not threatening knight g4. This bishop is not out. So it just wastes development. So now it's not a line. I mean, at the very least, white can play f4 and just bring your knight back. Yeah, it just wastes the move. Yeah, you, you definitely want a castle here. Because... There's nothing else that you'd rather do. You, you can't play d5 yet, unfortunately, because your king is compromised. So that's actually a mistake that people oft often make. So if you play d5 first, the problem is your king being on e8 is an issue. Because uh, white can play bishop b5, and then there's problems with, with relating to the pin. So, um, so yeah, you have to castle first. That's an important point, actually. I'm glad actually you mentioned it. Yeah, yeah, FedEx, can you change your color? It's, it's kind of loud. Okay, so anyway, so let's see what happens when white plays f3. Okay, so now the idea is that white's going to try to play bishop c4 and queen d2 and transpose into the Yugoslav. But since we've never played d6, we can actually avoid everything entirely and play castle. Okay, and now at bishop c4. Now, there's actually three choices here. Uh, I think the simplest to learn is to play this move queen b6. Okay, so the point is that black is actually threatening a variety of things. Okay, so most obviously black is threatening to take on b2. But secondarily, black is also threatening to take on e4. The point of taking on e4 is that this knight is currently attacked twice. And by playing knight takes e4, we actually open up a third attacker for this knight. So um, so most moves here actually just lose by force. Um, for example, like knight f5 or something, you know, looks tricky, but after queen takes b2, the problem is like everything is hanging. So, 
like I'm threatening the knight and I'm threatening the knight. So knight takes g7, queen takes c3, bishop d2, queen takes c4, and now I'm up a piece and this knight is also trapped. So uh, not looking good for, for white. Um, and if I move like queen d2, then you can actually play knight takes e4. And now you're, you know, you're going to win this guy. So if he takes the knight, you take here. And you're also threatening the queen. So if he tries a move like knight takes c6, for example, you can take on d2, then take on e7, take on b6, now you take on c4. And now again, material's even, but like everything is hanging. b2 is hanging. This knight, after rook e8, could be hanging. This bishop's hanging. So this is bad news for white as well. Um, so the most common move here is to play bishop b3, which blocks the queen's access to b2. And here, black can almost equalize by force with this move, knight takes e4. So knight g4 is like a tricky alternative, but I think knight takes e4 is simplest. So knight takes e4, and now if white recaptures, we simply take on d4 and win a pawn. So for white to regain his pawn, he has to play knight d5. Now our queen's under attack, and our knight is still hanging, so we have to get our queen out of dodge. And also notice that this knight defends e3. So if we play a move like queen c5, for example, he can move this knight away, and this bishop is no longer undefended. So we have to give a check. Now he blocks the check, we get our knight away, Okay, so now the point is he takes on c6 to remove a defender of e7, and then takes on e7. Okay, so he won his pawn back. Okay. But notice how our king is safer than white's king. And so our rooks are going to be able to come into play sooner than white. So he can take on c8. And there are two things you can try here. You can actually just take on c8, or you can actually play this move rook e8 trying to take advantage of the fact that this e3 bishop's undefended. So rook e8. And now, for example, if, <coughs> if, uh, if castle, now you can take on c8. And you kind of like gain a tempo in a way. Because your idea is if he plays like rook e1, I think you can win with uh, take on b3, or actually maybe take on e3 first, take on e3, take on b3, take on b3, and queen c5. Should be winning. Oh no, well, okay, no, I mean, I think this is good, actually. So he has to go, like, queen d3 or something. Rook e8. Rook e1, forced. He can go king f2, I suppose. But then I think bishop h6 is strong, so. Rook e1. Bishop h6. Okay, so he can't go queen d4, so he has to go king f2. Oh, okay, and now you can play a move like... G7 even. Because it's actually impossible for him to get out of this pin. If he plays queen d4, then he actually, I think, enters a lost king and pawn ending. So queen d4 you take, take on e3 a bunch, and then king f6, king e6, king d5. Sh should be good. 
but maybe it's just equal. But in, in any case, I mean, it, it's it's fine for black. So it's kind of a little trick to prevent getting to a Yugoslav. Well, yeah, what I was thinking is like queen d4, take, 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 king f6. I don't know what white does here, king e4 maybe. Uh, king e6. And then, I don't know, g4 maybe. five h4 f6 <clears throat> and then eventually I think white's gonna run out of moves so h5 king b6 take take f4 here f5 take take king b6 King here, king here, king here. And then, like, you can always gain tempi with b6, b5. I'm not sure if it's enough to win, but. I mean, o only black can be better, I think. So. I don't know if, like, b5 is the answer, but I mean, this has got to be good for black. Yeah, I was thinking about c5, but I don't don't know about c5. Like, I I guess it's good. Yeah, I guess it's good. C5 take take. Yeah, I mean the problem is this king can either win this pawn or win this pawn. I think because actually here here White's in Zugzwang. Yeah, that's the point. Well, okay, so let's see. Okay, so if he goes here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, that's probably a technically one end game, but okay, and we're getting too far afield, but this is probably one for black. Okay. But in any case, um, murky is an interesting try, but you can also take on c8 as well. Okay, so let me just like this. Okay, but the idea is that in this position, if they try to play f3 first, uh, they weaken this bishop on e3, and they allow this tactical possibility of queen b6 after castling. But again, you can't play this queen b6 move until you castle, because otherwise there are tactics that brew that aren't favorable for, for, for black. But after bishop c4, you can't play queen b6. And there are actually a lot of people who won't answer that correctly, and you can either just win a pawn or just win everything. Well, not 7 bishop c4, 8 bishop c4, but no, it's not technically 1. It should be e equal. It should be equal. Okay, so a couple of other things that white can try here are f4, for example. Uh, so here you can actually castle. And then after e5, play knight e8. And it looks a little awkward, but notice how white is at least two moves from castling. So this kind of pawn aggression shouldn't be able to be shouldn't be able to gain anything for white. So after knight e8, queen f3, simply d6. And then if they want to take on c6, you can play bishop d7. And here white has kind of a tough position. I mean, black's down a pawn, but uh, tremendous compensation for the pawn. This this guy's actually probably just falling. And again, you have ideas of rook b8, knight c7 to e6 maybe. It's not really clear where this queen goes. And notice that black's lead in development is, is helping him here. So this kind of Aggression is not usually the best course for white. Okay, another idea that white can have c5 
to play kind of like a move like H3 just to try to keep pieces out of G4. But that shouldn't really be too much of an issue. Again, just castle. Then if queen D2, D5 is strong. So if you can ever get D5 in after castling, you should always probably do it because it frees your bishop up and it kind of just contests the center. So take, 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 bishop d4, take, take, queen a5, queen a4, queen b6, knight d1, bishop f5, c3, e5, bishop a6, and rook d8. Then after castle knight f4, Black is doing quite well here. I mean, this guy looks silly. This guy looks a bit silly. These guys look silly. And all of Black's pieces are kind of on their optimal squares. The only really defect in Black's position is these pawns. But it doesn't look like this game is going to actually reach an endgame. <laughs> so I wouldn't be too worried about it. Um, all of White's pieces are somewhat offsides. So this position is, is pretty good for black, I would say. So yeah, sometimes you have to accept a structural defect in order for good piece play. But yeah, if white makes kind of an anemic move like h3, you shouldn't worry too much about it. And then one more thing I want to mention is um, knight b3. So uh, I'll mention it in, in a... I'll mention it also from this move order as well, but I'll go forward and move first and show it. Okay, so knight b3. So the idea with knight b3 in these positions is oftentimes you kind of want to play a5, a4, a3 and just really ruin really ruin white's pawn structure on the queen side. And this and force this knight to go someplace it doesn't want to go. And the point is if white plays a4. Then you get this strong square on b4 for your own knight. So for example, after a5, bishop b5 to stop a4, just castle, castle. And now you can actually play a4 anyway. And the point is that this knight is sort of overloaded. Um, it's defending this a4 square, but it's also defending this pawn. So for example, if bishop takes a4, you can simply take on e4. And again, the knight is sort of overloaded, because if you take on c6, I can take on c3 and then I win. So um, exchanging the A pawn for the E pawn is a good trade for white, or sorry, for black because he gets two center pawns to white's none. So, and also if white moves this knight, then after A3, we kind of rip open this whole diagonal and we weaken the dark squares because this B2 pawn will be gone. So knight takes A4, knight takes E4, knight B6, rook B8, c3, f5, f4, e6, a4, d5, and a5, g5. Take, 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 e5. So again, pawn sacrifice, but we're getting our central pawns mobilized. So notice this knight looks strong, but it's kind of out of play in a way, because it's not really threatening anything. I mean, it's threatening to take this bishop, but this bishop is not doing much for us at the moment. And this pawn is far advanced, but notice it's defending this knight, and if it ever pushes, we simply take the knight, and we get two pieces for a rook, and control the dark squares. So after e5, uh, black is actually in a good spot, because f4 is coming, this bishop is going to be running short of squares, and this pawn is actually going to fall eventually. And we can play a move like bishop a6 next to blockade this pawn. So, a lot of, a lot of pawn sacrifices, but I mean, it's fairly obvious to see the compensation. I mean, this kind of central pawn roller coming down the board is somewhat scary. This is all Accelerated Dragon, book fan, doing a little opening for him. One of many. Okay, so this is what happens of knight b3 in this line. So I'm going to show you one more thing, which is knight b3 on move, on move 6. So this actually takes a little bit of a different tenor. Okay, so 
so knight b3 here rather than after you know uh, bishop e3 knight f6 okay so knight f6 bishop e2 castle castle a5 a4 and now you use this idea of having the knight go to b4 so now we're threatening to play d5 So the point, the point of knight b3 is that white gets further control of the d5 square with his queen. So we can't play d5 right away. But now that uh, the knight is not going to be molested on b4 because we forced a4, now we can get in d5. So white has a few moves he can try here. Bishop g5 seems the most natural. Um, but even here you can play d5 actually. Because he takes an f6, takes an f6. If he takes on d5 with a pawn, you take on c3, and then you take on d5 with a knight, and wreck his pawn structure. If he takes with a knight, you can either take back and take on b2, or take on b2 first. And again, you ruin white's pawn structure. Um, bishop e3. So again, here d5 is good, and should be at least equal. Uh, if f4 b6 check first to force king h1 and now d5 and now if he takes bishop f5 and now another point is that this knight on b4 also attacks his pawn on c2 and so bishop f5 comes with a gain of tempo and we're, we're going to win this pawn back eventually anyway we're going to pile up on this d pawn so this is a uh, tough for white to meet and if he plays e5 instead, then after knight e4, take, take, bishop e5 and bishop e6. We get a strong knight on d3. And notice that this bishop is pinned, so it can't even take on d3 because we can take his queen. And we're threatening things like knight f2 and knight h3 and queen g1 and knight f2 mate. So we're threatening a little smutters. And this bishop on c1 is quite bad. And we can always play a move like f6 at some point. Of course, we have to get our king out of this pin, but we can always play f6 to kind of break up these pawns and to liberate this bishop on g7. Whereas white doesn't have that luxury with his bishop. It's kind of stuck behind his pawn. And our rooks are also connected, whereas his rooks are not. So this is a good position for black. Um... Yeah, so I think that should about cover it for this episode of the opening forum.